Dramatics. My name is Danielle Benson and I have with me today Matthias Martins, Melody Owen, and Bruce Campbell. Not that Bruce Campbell. And we are going to be talking today about our experiences because we have all reviewed at the Fringe before with uh, different magazines. And this year we're all coming together under Theatre Addicts to review the Vancouver Fringe. But I thought it would be really fun to talk about some of our experiences, some of our horror stories, and some advice that we have for you as fringe goers since we have been around the block a couple of times. So any opening remarks from anyone? Does anyone want to say anything general about what it's like to go to the Vancouver Fringe for anyone who hasn't been before? I love the Fringe. I love, there's so much to love, right? I love the unexpected surprises. I love these tiny little, you, you walk into this little theater and there are you know, 12 chairs. And you're like, wow, this is small. And then this, you know, this performer comes out and they do this intimate, deep, raw, wow, can I hug you? And you know, or more like riotous laughter. And it just, it's, you know, and then there's these huge, also huge theaters where you have this fairly big production going on that's traveled from Mexico and they're brilliant and you're like, Wow, what a production! So yeah. we have this the whole range of you know genres and and people and productions and sizes. It's just brilliant. Mm -hmm. The thing I think most about the fringe is you can do way more than you think you can do. You know the concept of seeing three, four, five plays in a day <laughs> sounds insane. <laughs> it sounds absolutely nuts. How are you going to be able to yeah. evaluate them all and, and, and watch everything? <laughs> actually get all the names right on those books because it's why programs were invented. Right. And you can always see more plays than you could possibly think you can and it's well worth it to do so. Mm -hmm. Because there will be things that will delight you, there will be things that will make you laugh your head off, as Melanie said. There are things that will move you to tears and if you don't go and see them, you're going to miss out. Mm -hmm. So who wants to miss out? Mm -hmm. There's not enough time left to miss out. More is better. More is definitely better. better. More is definitely better. Mm -hmm. What about you, Matthias? Uh, probably the thing I remember most distinctly is the, uh, the, the energy that comes over Granville Island mm -hmm. as an epicenter of the fringe. Yes. Uh, it's, it's just in the air the, the, whole, the whole time that the fringe is going. Mm -hmm. uh, there's this, this running of people to and fro. You can see like the actors mingling with the fringe goers. Uh, it's not just uh, an experience within the venues, it's an experience throughout the island. And as a reviewer, it's nice too because, you know, we've, we form a team to go and tackle uh, this, this challenge of, of hitting all of the shows of the Fringe. Uh, and as a result, there are lots of us scampering around the island. We bump into each other from time to time, uh, meet, meet in between uh, it, uh, shows to compile notes and and grab a coffee or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and there's there's an opportunity too for the fringe goers to participate in the in the culture of it. I, I seem to remember. I think this must have been four or five years ago that I I recall this event. That there was a storytelling event where members of the public could, you know, sign up to tell their story in a very open-ended fashion in the in the beer garden. Um, I don't know if anything like that is happening this year. I'll have to look into it. But it just kind of goes to show what the fringe is all about, you know? But it's, it's very lovely. Yeah. Everybody can participate. I love what you said about that, because it, it really is a festival atmosphere. There's something really unifying about fringe. The audience members, the performers, the volunteers, everyone feels like they're part of the same thing. And you feel that more on Granville Island, even though, you know, the fringe isn't only on Granville Island. It's, mm -hmm. it's in East Van, it's in all sorts of different places. But the hub is definitely Granville Island, and that atmosphere is def I think over the last couple of years, that atmosphere has spread more, especially like to the Colch and the Havana. Uh, whereas maybe five years ago, it was only on Granville Island, and now you can start to feel little pockets of fringe around Vancouver, which is really cool. Church basements in Kitsilano. Yeah! That's what yeah. Totally. Yeah. But, I'm used to, like public bathrooms sometimes, like really weird places for fringe sometimes. So, um, so when I asked these uh, intrepid reviewers, what I asked them was, I wanted to get three things from them that they're looking forward to in the Fringe this year, given their past experiences of being so involved. So who would like to go first? Three things that you're really excited about coming up. 
How about running into people who are putting on shows when you're lining up to get your pass? And just having a casual chat and finding out who are they, what they're doing, how excited they are about whatever it is, and getting a feel for the person putting on the show. Mm -hmm. That's actually a really good way of scoping out what you might like. Yeah, you get a lot of personal context from performance. Don't be scared to talk to them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Don't forget to ask your friends that might want to come along with you because uh, theater is best if it's shared. It really is. It is, a, it is a, a group activity. Mm -hmm. And while we don't necessarily need to cross the boundary into the performance itself, we are adding to the energy of the performance by our presence. So bring your friends. Mm -hmm. So you're looking forward to sharing it? Definitely. Friends. Definitely. Awesome. Yeah. Anything else? Um, third one? Third thing, third one? thing when we think about this. Hydrate, 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 hydrate. <laughs> That's advice. That's advice. <laughs> Some of them 
can really uh, break you down in a way you didn't think you could be broken down. So to have an experience, sometimes, usually. <laughs> so to have an experience like that, that's so uh, that's so intimate and like disconcerting, um, and then to have the opportunity to actually talk to the person who gave you that experience face to face, that's a big deal. And that's not something that you would be able to get out of your typical Netflix program. Mm -hmm. um, number three, of course, uh, which is also going to be a theme for me, is the food. Because the food at Grand Island <laughs> is fantastic. And they, they assemble uh, food trucks from all over the city, so there's yeah. always lots of variety, lots of new things to try. And you don't always get a chance to go down to Grand Island, so this gives you a great excuse to get down there and fill up. And the weather's usually nice, and in the in the kind of fringe bar, there's usually a beer garden, there's usually live music. So if you're kind of stuck at theater for a little while, you need a break, you can go and listen to some local artists. There's it's not just theater, there is a lot of other art around, specifically live music in the theater bar. So I think that's that's a really good point. Just experiencing the food and the tastes, the beer and the music of Vancouver in this in this very, very like, quintessentially Vancouver spot of Granville Island. I think it must be really rewarding for the artists as well, because I don't think they often get to interact with the public. Kind of, if you're on a Broadway show, you know, you don't get to interact with the public in the same ways you do. When you're on, when you're in the fringe circuit and you're like waiting in line, artists are going to come up to you in costume, they're going to try and tell you that you should come see their show, and there's so much, there's so much interaction that happens there, and it really allows that space for that conversation, which is, I think, what makes me really excited. Is is that we get to interact with the, the creators and the audience members get to interact directly, which doesn't happen all that often. Mm. So what I've also asked uh, my panel is uh, three things that they would advise to newbies to the French, because not all of you are French veterans the way we are, and not all of you, some of you will be, you know, loyal French goers for sometimes, some people even longer than I've been alive, but some of you hopefully will be trying it for the first time and trying something new, so we wanted to give you three pieces of our best advice about attending the Fringe and what to expect and how to prepare to get the most out of it. So we started on that side last time, so Matthias, do you have three pieces of advice for us? For, for our theater addicts? Absolutely. So the, the first piece of advice uh, I would give is get a Fringe program in you as soon as you can <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and make it your best friend because it is mm -hmm. an extremely good resource for orienting you to all of the information that uh, about like the when and where of the shows. So, um, because there are so many options, choosing what to see can be extremely daunting. So, uh, yeah. a good strategy to employ is to kind of whittle down the options by making making notes within within the uh, the book, mm -hmm. and then you can kind of like narrow down to some finalists. But then there's gonna have to be a, 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 a second pass because you first highlight the ones you're interested in, uh, and then you look at how it works out spatio, spatio, spatio temporally <laughs> in, the realm, of, in the realm of time and space. Because <laughs> um, uh, last time I was I was planning for the French, I did make the mistake of thinking that the three shows every age back to back were generally the same geographical area. When the first and third were in on Granville Island, and the second was uh, out toward East Van. Yeah. So it's a good idea to have a sense of where the venues are. We've um, all done. It's mm -hmm. not a problem if you have a TARDIS. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have so, a TARDIS. But even yeah. if you have a car, it's going to be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. try not to make a plan that involves violating the laws of physics if you can. <laughs> We've all tried. It doesn't yeah. <laughs> Law enforcement tends to take those even more seriously than they take the other misdemeanors out there. Um, and so a helpful thing to know there is, while a lot of the shows are going to be on Granville Island, uh, that's not the only place where there are venue schools together. For example, the, the Colch and the Havana, uh, both out in East Van, are within walking distance of each other. Um, and the Colch has two stages. Yeah. So there's three different options within walking distance. Mm. So, uh, my second piece of advice is food related. The uh, Granville Market closes at 6. Uh, the fleet of food trucks tends to deploy around 7 p.m., which means that in between, there's a little bit of a dearth of options for quick, fast, and easy uh, choices of food. So, it's a good idea to plan for that ahead of time, either by going to the market and 
getting something to eat in between, or just filling up because you know an hour gap can be survived by <laughs> by most by most animals on this planet. So you're probably going to be fine. But if that's your only time to have dinner, that's yeah. a problem. So make sure you're aware of when things are open, mm -hmm. when you're planning your schedule. Yeah, yeah, precisely. To summarize, advice number one: get the get the fridge guide. Use it to strategize. Advice number two, take note that the culture and the vet are within walking distance of each other. And advice number three, be advised of the uh, temporal food desert between 6 and 7 p.m. on Gravel Island. Good advice. Thank you. Thank you, Matthias. Just to build on, the, uh, on, the, on the, the actual program thing, I don't know this year whether there will be a, uh, an app for your phones because that seems to be something that's actually becoming a lot more popular. Most of the festivals in the city do have an app, which does help you figure out things like the logistics between venues, who's on at which venue, plus different views of the same data. So that can actually help dramatically, but of course I could be talking complete nonsense because I don't know if there's an app or not. We'll find out and put it in the comments below, <laughs> in the description below. But also, I'm going to share with you my spreadsheet because every year I make a spreadsheet of all the shows. <laughs> Uh, to help me figure out oh, what I want to see. I'm not going to share with you which ones I want to see, but I'll, I'll share with you the original before it gets marked up by all my favorites. Uh, mm -hmm. Because it is. It's a, it's a very challenging thing to do. It's quite an art unto itself, trying to cram a lot in uh, at once. So I just remember there's some important uncovered ground. Mm -hmm. If you want a fringe program, where do you go to get it? No, I haven't checked this this year. Usually Blends carries it. There is one online as a PDF, but get, get a, a hard copy because you, and you might want more than one hard copy. They will have them all over Granville Island and at every fringe venue, so they'll have them at the Colch, they'll have them at the Van, they'll have them at Granville Island. So there's always, you can always pick one up, but I, yeah, get a hard copy. And they are pre-fringe available. I know Blends is a carrier, I have a feeling that Vancouver Public Library also carries them. But again, we'll include a list in the comments, the description place down below. <laughs> Melody, what advice do you have for us? I'm going to start with picking shows. Awesome. Because, I agree, get a program, um, use the Excel spreadsheet, I color code it, I'm a nut. But, when all, the other thing I do is when you, so um, I get a, a pass, but when you go to buy tickets, right by where the ticket booth is, they have all the um, sandwich boards with, mm -hmm. all the, with all the shows. And what's really cool is if you hang out there, other people will hang out there, and they've seen that show, but they haven't seen this show, and you've seen this show, but you haven't seen that show, and you start having conversations with people. And they're like, oh, you should see this, I saw it. Oh, did you like it? Yeah, it was like this, this. Oh, great, thanks for the advice. And so, like, hang out around the sandwich boards. Mm -hmm. So I have a plan. But I also go on with So like there's this nice balance between I think this is what I want to see, but this stranger just told me that's awesome and I'm going to go see that instead. It's okay. And then um, the performers. The performers will be walking around with their postcards, like talking to you and handing out the postcard and trying to convince you to see their show. And if a performer comes to you, interact with them. And if they're charming or if they're they, they attract you in some way or they're, you like their energy, then go see their show. And, you know, I, I've actually had it both ways where I meet the performer and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, I, you know, I wasn't going to see a show and then I meet the performer and I'm like, ooh, I'm going to see that person. <laughs> so, you know, just go, like, have a plan, but also be open to new experiences, be open to strangers' advice, be open to interacting with the performers because that's half the fun. And, and go go with your whim sometimes as well. I would like to just quickly add a caveat to that. Sure. When taking strangers' advice, ask them why it's awesome. Oh, absolutely. Because different people have different tastes, and we're going to do our best as reviewers to tell you why we like something or why we don't, because uh, art is not objective. So if someone thinks it's awesome, you may not, yeah. but always ask them why, and that helps you get a sense of, of their taste compared to your taste. And we do, our, we do our best to tell you that, but also just when you're talking to strangers, don't just take the awesome, ask why it's awesome, why is it awesome? No, absolutely. I mean, that's why you're at the sandwich boards having these conversations, yeah. because you find out what they liked about it and what they didn't, and yeah. why it's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so my next piece of advice would be, uh, if you ran into trouble, ask a volunteer. If they don't know, ask another volunteer. If you don't know, ask another volunteer. Somebody <laughs> will know. If you really don't know, go to the ticket booth. Somebody will know. <laughs> 
The volunteers are just that, volunteers. And some of them volunteer, it's like a full-time job during this time for them. They take it seriously, but it doesn't mean they're getting the right information from the right people all of the time. Sometimes they miss the training session or something's changed. So just, you know, go with the flow, right? These are all volunteers. Be nice to them. And uh, I promise you they're doing their very best to, to try to sort everything out for everyone. And again, if they don't know, just ask another volunteer. And the festival mm -hmm. wouldn't be possible without them. Oh, so mm -hmm. say thank you. Yeah. And they are, they're awesome. Just because they don't always know everything, they can't always help you, but it doesn't mean they're not awesome. They are, they're awesome. And they're giving they're really so much. Awesome. Yeah, they're, they're really giving so much. So um, talk to the volunteers, say thank you to the volunteers, ask questions when you need help. Be open to new experiences. Remember, this is an opportunity to try things that, that you might never have thought to try before. So, you know, if someone says, this is a great show because this, 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 you know, don't, don't just say, well, I only like this type of show, and I only like one people show. Just, you know, give, sometimes I find in the fringe there are a couple of shows that are kind of hyped up, and they're the ones that got the, the reviews beforehand, or the interviews beforehand, mm -hmm. and they're really like, oh no, everyone can't wait to see this show. But then there's the, the other shows, but they're just these tiny little venues, and just, just this one person, this one person show, and they're doing all their marketing, and, and like pay attention to them, to them as well, because some of them are the, the, the most intimate, they're vulnerable, they're powerful, they're emotional, they're beautiful people, and they're giving you everything. So, so look for the small surprises. Don't mm -hmm. just go for the big production. Just be open to, to experiences. Those are my bits of advice. And take food. I'm always hungry. Take food. I'm poor. It's free. Take food. You don't need to stop and have food. You can just snack in line. So you're going to be standing in line for a while. So I just bring snacks. I, that's what I do. I have food all the time and I'm constantly eating. I eat all the time. Fair enough. Consuming theater is a real calorie burden. Right? <laughs> Love emotional burning. Mm. Uh, so first. Uh, okay, so I mentioned logistics, that's really important. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you have scouted out the shows that you think you want to go see, and then how far apart they are, and can you make it during that time, especially if you're doing things like using public transit, or yeah. car to go, or your EO, anything like that. Because if um, taking the time to park, sometimes the parking is really challenging to the locations if you're driving yourself. Um, the other thing is bio breaks. Not every theater makes it obvious where the bathrooms are, so you better make sure that you've given yourself enough time to find, scope out, do whatever you need to do before you can sit down and become comfortable and enjoy the show, because that's actually a big deal. That's good advice. Um, what else would I have to say about things like this? Um, money. Bring money if you really love a show and somebody's yes. selling Sometimes they're, 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 uh, they're wares. Yeah. Sometimes there's CDs, sometimes there's t-shirts, sometimes there's like G-Jaws and little bits yeah. and stuff like that. And if you love a show and you think that that, support, that, that artist is worth supporting, give them your cash. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And like a lot of them will make little artistic things to sell. This is their livelihood a lot of the time. The Fringe is one of the few places where the ticket money goes straight to the artists. Yeah. The fridge itself is a charity, so it doesn't take it doesn't take money from the ticket sales. That goes directly to the artists. Yeah. So that's awesome. But also, it's not a lot, and some of those those uh, those theaters are really small, and some of the artists are traveling from as far as Australia or you know Singapore. So you know, do support them. Buy their stuff. If you like them, buy their stuff. Buy the T-shirt. Buy the mug. Buy the buttons. It's like you're supporting your own little tiny local business. That you, the yeah. person, that your neighbor, that you want to actually yeah. be successful. If you, if we don't all chip together and go, you know what, you're doing great stuff, and I'm going to support you with something you can actually use to buy groceries and keep a roof over your head. Yes. And yeah. gas for the vehicle that you may be driving from this show to the next show to the next show after that. Those kinds of things are really important. Can, can I just tell a story that Please. reminds me of this? So I went, I went to this uh, one of the, one French show, show and, and she was a singer and she was she was gorgeous, like it was just the most beautiful show. And at the end, she said, "Well, I'm not from Vancouver, and I booked, you know, the, the where I'm staying when I was at home, and I didn't realize how far Surrey was. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are in Gravel Island." She said, "So." I don't know if there's any in the, um, one in the audience going to Surrey. <laughs> <laughs> That's community. But I can do with a lift if you are. And I just thought, gosh, I hope somebody drives her to Surrey, right? Yeah. You know? 
But like that, it just that's such a fringe it's story, right? Yeah. It just it reminds me of what you yeah. say. These, you yeah. know, draw her to Surrey if you're going, okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and also go on for this the same kind of thing. It doesn't happen to me with fringe yet, and I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but it has happened to me with other festival things where somebody will call me, an organizer will call me and say, hey, could you put somebody up on your sofa overnight? Yeah, really yeah. So, you know, these people really are, they're doing something that they have to do, and they really don't have the resources to do it. Most of them don't have it. So. And the Fringe does actually have, I'll put the link below, but the Fringe does actually have an area where you can offer to build it an artist. Mm -hmm. And it's a wonderful That's way to be involved. It's a fantastic way to get get to know, you know, the other side uh, the, from the audience. You get to know the, the, the performer side. So it's, it's a great thing to do if you do have a spare room. Uh, yeah, put someone up and support support them in that way. Another way you can support them is tell other people to go and see their shows. Yes. So you can comment on our reviews. You can if if the review isn't up yet, it will be. But if it isn't yet, you can even submit your own reviews to us, and we will publish it. You don't have to be officially on the review team for us to publish your review. We want to help spread the word about about all the different shows that are happening. So tell people, get the word out, tell your friends. Write, you know, on there if they have a blog or on our blog. Spread the word because a lot. There are so many shows. Mm -hmm. There are ninety nine shows, and it's a ten day festival. So if you see something that you think is underappreciated, tell everyone you know. It will make a difference. It'll make a huge difference for that artist. And sometimes it's the difference between two people in the audience and twenty people in the audience, and that can that can make or break someone's heart. <laughs> plus, plus, plus the fact that there's the Vancouver Fringe, but there's also the Victoria Fringe, the Regina Fringe, and a lot of the Edmonton, Toronto, actually, everywhere. Toronto, Edmonton being, when you said earlier about um, you know some people have been going to Fringe for longer than you've been alive. Yeah, Edmonton, 1986. Yeah, yes. so I was at that Fringe. So you were at that Fringe. I was at that Fringe. I was alive then. <laughs> <laughs> Only just. <laughs> Not welcome in some of the theaters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, but it's so so the idea is that these performances, these performances travel, and mm -hmm. if it's a rave here, even if it's on the last day, mm -hmm. even if it's on the last day, it goes somewhere else. That buzz. We're on the internet now, people. We can actually yeah. spread the news. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these performers, because of the way the French works. Some of them, the first and only review they may get may be from our magazine. Mm -hmm. So if you have something to say, share it. Share it with us. Share it with them. If you do share it with us, we will share it with their publicist. But you can also just share it directly with the Fringe. Even if it's just a quote, even if you don't want to write a review. Just a one-liner about a show. If you put it up on the Fringe Facebook page, that can really help, especially if they're a first-time performer. That can help them, even if it's the final closing night. Yep. They might be going on to another fringe, they might be mounting a show next year, and your quote might be the only quote that they can use, might be the only one they have. So and you can really make a difference. And they may be able to use it on the postcard, which yeah. helps promote their show, right? You know? That's happened to me. Absolutely. I was standing in line and an artist gave me a flyer and my name was on it. <laughs> <laughs> my quote with my name was like, oh, I said this. So <laughs> it's kind of cool. <laughs> There are some venues that are kind of tricky, especially if you're on, it's a Saturday night and you're on commercial yeah. drive That's true. and nobody can tell if you're lining up for a show or for dinner. So mm -hmm. make sure that you do talk to the volunteers and mm -hmm. you know, say, hey, I'm here for the show, I'm not here lining up to go into Fett's Whiskey Palace or whatever. You know? Yeah, yeah, but make sure you're in the right line. Exactly. Also, there are some venues where you do want to take a friend because if you're transiting home, like, I don't feel uh, very comfortable transiting home from the fire hall by myself in the middle of the night. I mean, it's not that sketchy, but I prefer to have a friend with me. Something I would recommend, if you are very new to the fringe and you think you can only handle one show a night, I really wouldn't recommend doing that, because the fringe is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Some of these are well-seasoned artists. Some of them have never performed before. Some of them have never performed before and are amazing. Some of them have performed for a while. and art because it's a lottery system. So don't just see one show because your chances are it might be amazing, but if it's not, you've only seen one show that evening. See two or three in an evening and then you're guaranteed one of those is going to blow
blow your mind. One of them, I always plan to say at least three. I figure out of three, one of them's going to be terrible, one of them's going to be mediocre, and one of them is going to blow my mind. And I figure, you know, three in the evening is a pretty good, pretty good fare. You might want to leave buffers in between if they all blur together for you, but I would recommend always seeing more than one at a time, just so that you're kind of evening your chances. I know that sounds a bit dated, but... <laughs> just, to, just to build on that and to, 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 to counterpoint the concept of anecdotal evidence versus yes. scientific evidence, I have never seen a crappy French oh, show. Oh, really? I haven't. I've lucked out. I don't know how. But it's <laughs> unusual. <laughs> I can always find something that's worth talking about. You're just an optimist. Uh, maybe. Maybe that's, maybe that's it. But, you know, if that's a good attitude to have. If somebody is going to have the moxie to get up and mm -hmm. actually try to do a show yeah. in there, then I'm going to give them the time of day. Yeah. I might not write the best review of it if I thought you're yeah. phoning it in, or this is the same thing you did last year, and you're not giving us anything new, mm -hmm. yeah. but I'm certainly not going to, you know, like, walk out. No. I wouldn't walk out, but yeah. I do sometimes complain. Like, right. like, you're nicer than I am. You're a nicer person than I am. <laughs> One way of reframing mm -hmm. this advice is that there is an incredible diversity of aesthetic tastes yes. in the world, mm -hmm. and that leads to many uh, methods mm -hmm. of aesthetic production and aesthetic consumption, mm -hmm. and virtually all of them are represented at the fringe. So it's not yeah. like a box of chocolate so much as a box of uh, every type of food. Yeah, box of every single type of food. Time 
where you have to stop going to the box office to pick up your tickets, and then there's a period of time to wait, and then you have to get it at the venue. So you can always pick up your tickets at the venue, but be aware of how those logistics works, those logistics work, and look it up beforehand because you don't want to be waiting in line for half an hour or an hour and then get to the front and oh we don't have your tickets anymore, they're at the venue. That is that, that can be quite frustrating. And they have to do it that way. I'm not saying it's a bad thing the way they do it, but you need to be aware of where your tickets are gonna be at what time so you can coordinate that. Um, great. So thank you so much. Thanks to my intrepid reviewers. Thanks to Bruce Campbell, Melody Owen, and Matthias Martins. I am Danielle Benson. We are your theater addicts. And we are going to be talking about the Fringe over the next month, getting excited for the Vancouver Fringe Festival. There are a lot of other Fringe Festivals happening across Canada, but we are only in Vancouver, so we're going to be talking about the Vancouver Fringe. And we look forward to seeing you there. If you have comments, if you have questions, please share them with us. We want to get this engagement, we want to get the discussion going. And we're going to be interviewing some of the Fringe artists over the next month, so stay tuned. <laughs>